So welcome to unit A of our SLAM lecture. And in this lecture we will get you started to work with a real robot. So if you have taken the artificial intelligence course of Sebastian Thrun, you now know about a self-driving car. So here is one from the official Google blog. And what you can see here, well, that's just a standard car. Uh, whereas this here, well, that's a laser scanner. Using that car would be great. However, we had a certain problem buying such a thing, so we built our own. So as you can see here, we have two systems. Uh, one is the Google self-driving car, and this is our own robotic system. So what's the similarities? Well, on top you have, as I mentioned, this lighter. And we do have a lighter as well. Well, so instead of this bulky Velodyne 1 million scan points per second, 70,000 US dollar scanner. We have this small, lightweight Hokuyo scanner on top of our robot. And we also have a different drive mechanism. So here you have normal tires, um, whereas we do have a Caterpillar system with Caterpillar tracks. Well, and otherwise, well, that's just a car. So it has somewhere here in there, there's a drivetrain driving here, the, the probably the rear axis. We have that too. Right, so we have two of those tracks here. We have two motors here driving the left and the right track, and so the vehicle moves forward. Our device is actually much, much cheaper than the original Google self driving car. While on the other hand, there is some little drawbacks, one of them being this car is actually a self driving car, whereas this car is currently driven by Daniel. So here's Daniel. He designed and constructed this device and he also has built the control software which is able to control the movements of this small robot but which is also able to get the measurements of this laser scanner device in real time. So let's have a closer look at the system. We do have the lighter up here. Now the lighter has an axis here and the lighter is shooting out its rays in that direction, so horizontal, so parallel to the ground. And there's some area behind here which is not covered by a lighter, right? So that's uh, a dead area which where the laser scanner can't see anything. And we do have our caterpillar tracks here. These are the driving motors here and the other one you can see. This is an extra battery and this is the controller that drives here the two motors. And now the controller links wirelessly via Bluetooth and also the LiDAR data is read out via a serial interface, right? It goes into this Bluetooth device here. So that also is sent via Bluetooth. This is our robotic car in his natural environment. What you can see here is our arena. And so we placed some obstacles. These are actually not meant as obstacles. Those are our landmarks. So later on we will try to find those landmarks in our scan to find out algorithms to control the movement of the robot. So how is all that set up? So our robot is here. So there's no wiring. It's all Bluetooth. And here's the control computer. And with this control computer you can tell the robot to move forward and you get back the signals of the motors, the motor count, and you also get back the measurements of the LiDAR scanner. Here you have another view and here on the screen you can see now a live view of the scan that the robot does. So here is a top view of everything. The robot is in the left bottom corner and now starts to move. And if you look carefully you see that the robot has a red dot. That is actually the LiDAR. And you also see a, a small red circle that follows this red dot and has sometimes a little bit of a lag. You also see the video does not move really evenly. So there is probably some lag, time lag issues here. But nevertheless, this red circle is tracked and gives us a reference trajectory. So by this means we do have an external measurement system, not part, not being part of the robot, that gives us a reference where the robot is. And there is those time lag issues Nevertheless, your algorithms should be able to cope with these. 